I know it's taken a while, but the track in the Raven Trust Dive is finally complete and RMC is starting to focus elsewhere. Let's dig deeper into what else happened this week and what to expect going forward. What's up guys, Dr. Costa here on behalf of the Georgia Coaster Connection, and welcome back to another Airy Force One construction update. Before we get started, I just want everyone to know that all photos and footage included in any of these construction updates are free to use with credit. I'd also like to thank my Georgia Coaster Connection partner Christopher as we gather this content together. I'll link his pages down below. RMC and Fun Spot continued to transform the park this week while the remainder of the Atlanta area kids headed back to school. I know the initial plan was to have this open before now, but the pace RMC has been working with lately doesn't scream a 2023 opening to me at all. I was sent some screenshots this week showing that Wikipedia, of all places, has the expected opening date listed as 2023. But I just want to make it clear that this is Wikipedia, which anyone can edit. Neither Funspot or RMC have said anything in regards to an opening date. In fact, advertisements around the park still say 2022. And no, I don't know either, but I do have details from the park this week, so let's teleport back to the progress in the ride now. Last week we saw RMC top off the Raven Trust Dive, while also giving us peaks at the pre-lift and transfer track, for the first time. Funspot also announced the renaming of Screaming Eagle to Hurricane in order to make way for the new set of flyers coming to the park. The parking lot expansion was also paved, so as always, let's quickly start right there. It looks like they let the asphalt set this week, and I'd expect it to be striped coming up soon. It seems like they started to work on the retention pond as well. And speaking of ponds, let's look at this one instead. As we all know already, this is where the barrel roll and chili dip will join the sections of the ride together. I make sure to take a look back here every week to see if anything is new. And while there isn't anything new on the track or support front, there is a new trench dug all the way around the pond but I have no clue what it's for, so I'm not gonna try to speculate too much. Maybe a future lighting package, but that's the only guess I've been able to come up with. I also took a gander down in the woods to see if those pieces of track were still there. While it may not be the clearest on screen, they are still back there, and I suspect this has got to be the track for the barrel roll and chili dip, since it is the only remaining track needed for this portion of the ride. So, let's head in front of the arcade to get another angle of where this track will soon be going. Before I even got there, I could tell a lot had gotten done this week. The walkway had shrunk on both sides, and we saw what is some of the last of the quad down supports getting installed. We saw a few supports laying near the arcade last week, but those had now gone vertical. Not to be outdone, however, the supports that we saw on the other side of the walkway that had been laying around for a few weeks have gone vertical as well. Whether or not this is going to remain a walkway beneath the coaster remains to be seen, but I could see it happening for sure. Especially the entrance to the ride will be nearby. More on that later. As far as supports for the barrel roll, in recent weeks we were still waiting to see some progress here. We had seen markings for the supports on the concrete, but no other signs other than that. This week, supports have been moved on site, and you can see the pre-work beginning to come together. And the same for the big drop. With the remainder of the quad down supports going vertical now, more supports have been organized nearby, and I believe these will be the bottom of the big drop. As we know from the animations and renderings that the double up will take place over the ticket booth seen here. While we are on the topic of renderings and animations, myself and a few others have noticed something recently. In the initial POV that we have probably all seen by now, the quad down seems pretty tame. I was concerned initially that this could be the only duller moment on the ride as it began to wind down into the brakes. However, if you take a close look at these supports here, these are installed at ground level, and have been for a while. In fact, it appears that this has always been the plan, at least since the graphics were released at IAPA last year. Because if you look at the one for the quad down, it's the exact same profiling that we are seeing come together before us, right now. This drop will be the final element before you pop up pretty aggressively into the final brakes to round out your ride on Air Force One. Walking along the straightaway, it was pretty clear that a lot of the supports last week had already been used or were being relocated to their respective locations. I was actually fortunate enough to watch RMC do some of this while I was there. Super nerdy, I know, but I don't care. Taking a look at the transfer track now, 
You'll see that RMC has moved some straight pieces of track to the site that will no doubt be installed here in the near future. And yes, as you've probably already noticed from some of these shots, all of the track is also on the Raven Trust Dive. But we will get there soon. Don't you worry. I promise. It's coming. There's still a lot more going on that we need to cover before we can get to that. Which brings us to the preload section. The second of the two bunny hills has now been installed, and RMC has also added more track to the exit of the ZRG stall. We saw supports go in last week, but this week we've got track. That's not all, however, because if you take a closer look here, you'll see what appears to be the first signs of electrical work for Air Force One. I was curious as to when this would begin, but it appears that we now have our answer. The timing seems to make sense as we are getting close to seeing the station and transfer track installed. At first glance while driving into the park this visit, I actually thought the station was starting to go vertical, but I later realized that these were pallets storing more supports. I believe these supports will begin taking form as the Outer Banked Airtime Hill in the near future, and the profiling in this track nearby seems like it would fit the bill of this element perfectly. I'd expect this element to be the next to be installed since we are seeing the exit of the ZRG stall get installed alongside the prelift. While the profiling on both of these elements looks great, the exit of the ZRG stall should give you some ridiculous pacing heading into the Outer Banked Airtime Hill. We should be seeing that in the station come into existence very soon. Now about the station, because if you're like me you've probably wondered how we're going to get to the station and where the queue line would end up being. While this isn't confirmed quite yet, Funspot unveiled the new park map last week, and it appears to show just that. While the entrance isn't specifically marked, we can follow the sidewalk down to the Fun Food slash Batting Cages stand, where it appears we will be one day walking beneath the quad down and Big Drop to enter the ride. This should give some phenomenal angles of the coaster as we wait to ride it. Incredible angles can't even begin to describe what the RMC workers must have on the Raven Trust Dive. So let's take a closer look, because while I was at the park, RMC was hard at work finishing off the crossbeams of the Raven Trust Dive. Looking at it now that all of the track is on and the structure has been topped off, I seriously can't wrap my mind around how we are going to pass through that structure, but I can't wait to ride it nonetheless. The profiling of this element is going to hammer riders with positive forces and will likely be the most intense element on the entire ride. Before, of course, balancing out those positive forces with an immediate airtime hill at a ridiculous rate of speed. I don't know how the mind of Joe Draves came up with this element, but I am so happy that he did, and I am thrilled to finally see all the track in place here. Air Force One is about to head down the home stretch, so here's to hoping we get to ride it this year. While that's still got your attention, I want to follow up on the announcement I made last week. If you missed it, we are having the first ever Georgia Coaster Connection meetup at Six Flags Over Georgia on Sunday, August 21st. We will be meeting and starting our day off at Twisted Cyclone at 11am. We hope you will join us for an awesome day of fun, friends, and riding coasters. The only requirement we are asking is that all children under the age of 16 are accompanied by an adult. We look forward to seeing you all there. Thank you all for watching. That was the 23rd of many Air Force One construction updates to come. If you don't want to miss out on more construction updates like this, then be sure to subscribe to the channel, as many more of these will be coming out, leading up to the opening of the ride. If you haven't already, then also be sure to follow Georgia Coast Connection over on Instagram, your home for all things Air Force One. If you're feeling inclined, then you can follow me as well, at Dr. Underscore Coaster. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.